So a while ago, an issue was discovered with EVGA's uh, ACX 3.0 cooled graphics cards. So that's actually what I have is one of EVGA's super clock 1080s. And the issue was with the VRMs on the GPU, they didn't do a good enough job actively cooling them. So they had issues with them overheating and actually some cases where they would physically like burn out and you could see burn marks on the PCB. So in response, EVGA came out with two solutions. The first solution was a BIOS update to the graphics card. And all that did was essentially raise the base fan curve so that the fans were running at a higher RPM when the GPU was under load. And that kept the temperatures cool enough to where the VRMs wouldn't burn out. The second solution that EVG came out with was a little uh, like thermal pad kit that you could order from them. They sent it, shipped it for free, which was really, and basically all you do is take your graphics card apart, put the thermal pads down. I think it's mostly probably on the VRMs just to help it dissipate heat a little bit better and then you put everything back together and it should run a bit cooler. Now, unfortunately, I don't really have enough sophisticated equipment to measure the temperatures on the VRMs on the card while it's under load or anything like that. So really what I'm going to do is just take my card out, pull it apart, put this, put this kit in and just kind of film the whole process and see how it goes if I run into any snags and just so that you can get a, a behind the scenes of, uh, of how this thing's done. So it looks like this is for all 10, 1080, 1070, 1080 variants. Um, and they give you, I think the big thermal pad is for the back plate, um, but the 1070, at least one of the 1070 editions doesn't come with a back plate. So all the kits just come with this. And it says that you can do, so there's the VRM uh, base plate thermal pad and back plate thermal pad, and you can do any of all three, they're all, technically optional. Installation. So the first thing we do is remove the back plate. So step two is to remove the small PCB screws here and then we'll remove the uh, spring retaining screws for the heat sink. These instructions are really helpful because they come with pictures of your exact card and where the screws are that you need to remove so that you don't miss any of them. And it even tells you which screws not to remove. So next up we are going to be removing the fan head and LED connectors. So they make it sound like this little connector is supposed to be really easy to take out, but man, it's a pain in the ass. So you can see there were two fan connectors. There's this first one here. When it was sitting against the plate, you pop this one out and then you can peel this back. There's one more back here and you just pop that out. So now we remove the base plate. Which is a little stuck on, but fairly easy to pull off. So now that we've removed the base plate, we need to peel off these VRAM thermal pads. I'm gonna set them over here because I don't think we're gonna need them again, but just in case. So there are some additional thermal pads along the, uh, the other side here. And it looks like we want to leave these on. So just remove these VRAM. Now with a lint-free microfiber cloth, as well as some isopropyl alcohol. We're gonna go ahead and clean the spot on this base plate where we removed the VRAM, the thermal pads. It actually looks like they have little engravings, kind of etchings or whatever, where the uh, thermal pads are supposed to go. 
Okay, and then we are also going to wipe off the VRAM chips. And finally, we wipe off the actual GPU. So it says to do the thermal grease first. Maybe there's a reason for that. I don't know, I'll follow the directions. Just get it in a nice gob in the middle. Should be fine. I think I called these the, oops, the VRM thermal pads earlier. These are the VRAM thermal pads. So it actually looks like we need to cut these This part was uh, obviously ambiguous because it actually shows this lens. It looks so good, but it focuses so terribly. So as we can see, there are separations here, like each spot is a separate thing. So it made me think that I should cut up the thermal pads and put them down separately into pieces. But really what it seems like you're probably supposed to do is put one of the big strips here, one of the big strips here, and then the little strip here without cutting them up at all. Now we take our thin thermal pad. Now we want to reattach the heat sink in the reverse order. Okay, now we put all the little screws back in. Alright guys, well there you have it, the thermal pad mod for the EVGA ACX 3.0 cooler models of the GTX 1070 and 1080. Overall, it was a pretty simple process. It only took about an hour or so. There were just a couple issues that I faced. One was that the LED light power connector was a little difficult to pop out. But once I got that one out, the other one, the fan connector, or maybe that was the other way around, but the, the front one, the first one here was a little difficult to get out, but once I got that, the other one went fine. The second thing was that there was a little bit of ambiguity in how the VRAM thermal pads should be applied. While the diagram on the instructions showed the VRAM modules with individual squares over them, leading me to think that I should cut up the thermal pads and apply them individually the way that they were originally on there, when in reality all I really had to do was peel off those strips and lay the entire strip over each row of the VRAM modules. And finally, it was slightly tricky getting all of the plates lined up so that the screws could go back together, but all in all it wasn't that difficult. And once I got the four main spring retention screws in here and lined up, all the other screws went in without a problem. Alright guys, well that about wraps it up. Thanks for checking out my video. As always, I really appreciate it. I appreciate all of the uh, all of the support, all the views, everything, all of the comments. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, suggestions, anything at all, as you know, always just put them in the comments. And I will see you in the next one.